Good morning and welcome to the worship service at New Light Church in Deland, Florida. Uh, we're glad that you are with us here and there. Today is communion. Today is communion Sunday, so if you would like to celebrate communion with us, uh, please prepare some juice and a piece of bread. We also ask that if you live in the local area here in the land, if you would please come and uh, worship with us in person. Our viewership seems to be uh, climbing and growing. Uh, you can watch us live on Facebook or during the week on Rumble and YouTube. Are there any other announcements? If not, then let's begin this weekend with the singing of God's praises. Let's celebrate our nation's leaders, um, pray for them, and, Amen. and pray for our country. Uh, God bless America, our words that probably we should be saying a million times a day. God bless America. We, we love that we're able to be here and worship in freedom. And we're able to be in a church and we're not being persecuted and we're not being told how to worship and who to worship. So here we are and we thank you for this ministry and that we're able to do that. And we praise the Lord that our ministry is growing. Let's lift our voices in praise.
Let the nations sing it louder. We're living in his name. Let's turn in our hymnals to 695. 695, my country tis a thief. Please uh, excuse my voice this week. I've not been able to talk much with laryngitis. My wife has appreciated that. <laughs> but it probably hurts you more to listen to it than it does for me to, to talk. We uh, want to lift up uh, Bill's family, uh, Pam's brother-in-law this week who passed away. I had the uh, opportunity of speaking uh, with him several weeks ago, and he was, and I hope the family doesn't mind me mentioning this, but he just wanted to confirm uh, his faith and his salvation, which he did, and so this is a day and a time of celebration for him, a time of loss and grief for his family, so we certainly lift up his family. Also, special prayer request goes out to Abby Chen, Chang. Chang in uh, Michigan, who uh, is experiencing brain cancer. So we want to be with her and pray that the presence of the Lord will be with her. Also, uh, Ginger in, o uh, in Ocala, not Ginger, but Mary. Mary. And, uh, Anybody else we need to lift up? Ginger too, though. Yeah, Ginger. Ginger, yes. I, I knew I had that name on my mind who is recovering from foot surgery. The psalm this morning is Psalm 67. God be merciful unto us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us that the way may be known upon earth thy saving health among all nations. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. O let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for thou shalt judge the people righteously and govern the nations upon earth. 
Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Then shall the earth yield her increase, and God, even our own God, shall bless us. God shall bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. O oh God, on and then this week of celebrating as a country our independence, we remember most and first of all that it is you that made us a free people. But while on this earth we know that there is a battle going on for our souls, for our freedom, and for our individual independence. And we know that our freedom that we enjoy this day in this country did not come without a price. We lift up and we thank you for all of those men and women who gave their lives that we might be free. We do confess that our dependence is upon you. Governments will fail. Institutions will fail. People will fail. But we know that you are the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Help us as a country, as a nation, as a people, as a church, to stand for your truth and your righteousness. Help us to know your word. Lift up those that have lost loved ones. We lift up those that are caring for those that are hurting in grief and ill. We lift up all of those first responders. And we lift up our young men and women who are serving continually for the protection of our country. For it is in your name and in your son's name that we do pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Hear our prayer, God above, as we come to you and seek your patient love. Hear our
Thank you, Pam, Vaughn, Allen. The battle continues. Hebrews, the sixth chapter, the first six verses. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, Paul is writing, he begins to tell us that there is more to the faith than salvation. There is more to the faith than being forgiven or getting a pardon. He will go on to tell us in the next few verses that once we are saved, once we are redeemed, that we need to move beyond that, if you will, grow in maturity. Let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance, from the dead works and faith toward God. Of the doctrine of baptisms, all of these are true, all of these are good, all of these are things that we condone, advocate, and practice. And of laying on of hands in the resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. And this we will do if God permit. For it is, and then this is where we move on into the next phase of our Christian life in knowing this. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened, that is, once they became Christians, and have tasted of the heavenly gift, that is, had the confirmation, the assurance of knowing that they were Christian, and were made partakers of the Holy Spirit, and have tasted the good word of God, able to read it, understand it, and the powers of the world to come, these people we are talking about, knowing the biblical prophecy, then comes this. Knowing all of these things, if they shall fall away, to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. And then I would like to share Jeremiah 6.15 with you. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? No, they were not at all ashamed. Neither could they blush. Therefore they shall fall among them that fall. At the time that I visit them, they shall be cast down, saith the Lord. And then Isaiah 5.20. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. And then... Galatians 6, 9, let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. And then one of our key verses, Matthew 18, 6. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, if it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck, and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Instead of celebrating July 4th with fireworks, parades, and flag waving, let us celebrate our independence as Christians and as Americans by preaching the word and the ways of our Lord. Pam mentioned that we continue to live in a free country where we are able to preach with freedom. But we know that every day that is being threatened. 
So today, as our writer directed us, I direct my words not to the unsaved, not to the seeker, not to the pilgrim of the faith, but rather I am directing my words to those that are Christians, those that have gone beyond salvation. You are, on a daily basis, faced with evil that 20 years ago was unimaginable. Our faith encourages us to not give up the fight against evils and powers of the darkness. We are being attacked with debauchery that challenge every thought, every belief, every act of faith that we have. I ask myself, and I think that if you'll be honest, you will find yourselves asking this same question. Can the world be so wrong all the time? Can you be so wrong all the time? Can you always be biased and opinionated seeing how Satan is at every corner of life? Well, as mature Christians, let me assure you the world is wrong. The world is never used as a word in all of the scriptures unless in a negative connotation. No, I do not believe that you are a conspiratist. I do not believe that you are a terrorist, as some of us have been labeled. I do not believe that you are a homophobe, nor do I believe that you're just playing crazy. Some of you I'm still wondering. God has given you as a Christian the ability to discern evil, whether it's subtle or whether it's overt, whether it's visible or whether it is covert. John Wesley made this statement. What one generation tolerates, the next generation will embrace. You can see the things that the person standing right next to you can't. The further that our country moves away from God, doesn't it make sense and logic that the closer we become, to Satan. This trinity possesses all that is needed to damn our souls and not only that but it gives the ways and means to pave the road for others to descend into the fiery pits promised in Revelation. We can advocate, we can argue what is normal, what is acceptable and we can do this through consensus, through compassion, through sensitivity, or through inclusiveness or tolerance. Does that make it right or acceptable? No. The word abomination does not come from Webster's, woke, or the world. It is a biblical word and it is defined as something that God hates and eventually will not tolerate. As we said last week, if you take a pig and you put a dress on it and high heels and lipstick, the reality is that it remains a pig. The hellish secular theological trinity is what we see being displayed in today's society through science and even the church with a new three letter abbreviation that has popped up into our society and that is D-E-I diversity, equity and inclusiveness 
And those words like the rainbow have been taken and their definition have been changed. Do we believe in diversity? Of course we do. But not in the way that is being presented to us in the political world or political realm. I've shared with you before when I uh, was uh, a missionary earlier on in my ministry that I had a church and that I was the only white man in the entire congregation. The rest were of every breed that you could think of, every color. Inclusiveness. In my 40 plus years of ministry, I have always strived to include everybody and never to exclude. That does not mean that I accept all of their ways. And I do not accept them coming into the Christian church and expecting and asking and demanding us to change our dogmas and our doctrines and our theology to meet their opinions. The DNA of DEI reveals its heritage from Marxism, socialism, and communism, falsely and using gaslighting to fuel its untruths, trying to convince us that they know what's best for us, whether it be how to raise our children, how we spend our money, how we obey our rulers, what we accept as important and priorities in our life. We cringe and we feel our blood pressure raising when we hear, well, Pastor, Jesus was inclusive and it made no difference if they were Jewish, Gentile, Greek, if they were from Jerusalem or Jericho, from Chicago or New York, from Miami or San Francisco. Yes, that's true. Jesus was and is inclusive. And yes, I will add to that, he even sat down and ate with sinners but the rest of the story is his reason was to call them to repentance accept him as the only son of God and the only way to eternal life in heaven as Christians in 2023 we find ourselves walking through a sewer of pariahs running through a field of fiery arrows and fleeing from a pack of wolves dressed as sheep. No wonder we find ourselves questioning at times our own faith, our lack of tolerance and not desiring to be included with the crowd or not being sensitive to, sensitive, to sinful behavior. But what you and I can be assured of is that God continues to reign in our hearts, in our minds, as we face the demons of this world on an everyday basis. Your encouragement is to not grow weary in your well-doing, as the Lord will supply us with all that we need to fight the foe. It stands to reason that one who can raise from the dead, that he can certainly give us strength to navigate the evils of this world. There is so much sin that all we can do at times is just shake our heads and say, I just can't believe it. Well, it's true. A former president of the United States made this statement, and I can quote, and with my little discernment, it appeared to me with some joy. He said, we are no longer a Christian nation. Well, there you go. 
Look at the results. He sat under a pastor who was an expert in liberation theology and the sad fact is that most contemporary Orthodox Christians are not even aware that they are being attacked on a daily minute-to-minute -minute theology of liberation theology. What is liberation theology? It means that you can use force. You can kill, you can riot, you can burn, you can steal. You can do whatever is needed to gain what you're trying to do and then do it in the name of the Lord in righteousness. This theology has darkened this great nation with lies, with, with deception and false perceptions of the personality of God. We cannot go through a day without hearing of another place where the Bible is banned. I have done some limited ministry as a local pastor in jails and in prisons. And as I viewed and as I observed in the cells and the open dorms, there was never a shortage of Bibles. Now, whether or not they were read, I don't know. But I know there was never a shortage. But don't dare bring one into a classroom. With all of this hostility, anger, and just plain downright meanness, there is a truth that sprouts its head through fertile soil, and that is... Let me assure you and comfort you with these words. God is here. He is alive. He is not left. He is not gone anywhere. Even when he is silent. And God does care about you. While ministering his Father's will, Jesus addressed him as the absence and opposite of God's will. He even compared the behavior of we adults to and with and for our children. I read the scripture about if we abuse our children, that it would be better if a millstone, you know what a millstone is? It's a humongous stone many times eight feet plus wide and it would be hooked up with a stick in the center and the axle hooked to an oxen it would go around in a circle and they would throw grain into the path of that millstone and it would grind it down and it weighed tons and Jesus used that illustration it's better to take that millstone and tie it around your neck and then throw you into the sea than it is to abuse children. Well, I'm just going to let my children make up their own minds about religion. How's that working out? You teach them how to hold a spoon. Teach them how to go to the bathroom. Teach them how to make their bed, how to make good grades in school. Even teach them how to drive a car. But you will let them make up their own mind about Jesus and the faith. Satan loves that and you'll get another gold star or should I say a glowing piece of coal. Preacher, who are you talking to? I've never abused a child. What about the 85,000 children who have gone missing crossing our border? 
and all we do is use word salads, semantics, and we're told, do not believe your lying eyes. Investigations have shown that many of these 85,000 end up as sex slaves. There's no documentation. There's no ID. There's no evidence or proof that they're even here. And we're told by some people that 85,000 might be a conservative figure. They're sold into illegal labor. As a country, if we know any history, remember when child labor laws came into existence when pre-teenagers were in coal mines, in sweatshops, making minimum or no salary, or what about all of the queer parades dangling their genitals in front of our young children? They're fighting us, but as Christians, somehow many times we take the role of being passive and say, well, let's just let God take care of that. What do you think he's called us to do? To stand by and watch? I, uh, all the email I get is not saying, Rick, we really like you. <laughs> Some of what I get is uh, chastising and rebuking me, and that, that's okay. That means I'm doing my job. Got one this week. I printed it in color, used up a lot of my color ink <laughs> to do this. But it comes from somebody that Fallen, and I know. Dear evangelicals, please leave the LGBTQ and I will add, add XYZ. Please leave the LGBTQ community the hell alone. They are trying to live, work, raise families, worship in love and peace. Start emulating Jesus. Start the, the treating these people as you'd like to be treated and stop being horrible in the name of God a popular belief in our society and church is what one does in their bedroom is their business and I'm not suggesting bedroom police but what I am saying is that now it has moved from the bedroom out into the streets. Part of the queer manifesto. Did you know they have one? We're here, we're queer, and we're coming for your children. Documented. The Homosexual Manifesto as to Congress in 1987 and the implemented by the entropic U.S. Supreme Court in 2015. I don't, I can't, I'm not going to read the whole thing to you, but I've just underlined some minimal things. This is reprinted from the Congressional Record. We shall sodomize your sons, emblems of your feeble masculinity, of your shallow dreams and vulgar lies. We shall seduce them in your schools, in your dormitories, in your gymnasiums, in your locker rooms, in your sport arenas, in your seminaries, in your youth groups, in your movie theater bathrooms, in your army bunkhouses, in, you know, that certainly is written by a homosexual that's never been in the army. Uh, Lee, do you ever hear it called a bunkhouse? <laughs> but we know what they mean. In your truck stops, in your all male clubs, in your houses of Congress, wherever men are with men together, 
Your sons shall become our minions and do our bidding. They will be recast in our image. They will come and crave and adore us. Women, you cry for freedom. You say you are no longer satisfied with men. They make you unhappy. We connoisseurs of the masculine face. It goes on, and then finally they say, We will unmask the powerful homosexuals who masquerade as heterosexual, heterosexual sexuals. You will be shocked and frightened when you find that your presidents and their sons, your industrialists, your senators, your mayors, your generals, your athletes, your film stars, your television personalities, your civic leaders, your priests, are not the safe, familiar, bourgeois, heterosexual figures you assumed them to be. There was a time that we called them freaks. Now we're being told we are the freaks. Homophobic? You bet. I'm scared to death of what they have planned for my grandchildren and my great-grandchildren. There is a famous man in our world. Everybody knows his name. And this week, he made a rare intervention into the refugee crisis in Europe by commenting on a child rape case in Australia. Don't know if you're up on that. But there was an overturning of a rape conviction of an Iraq refugee who assaulted a 10-year-old boy at a swimming pool. And this world leader says, and that diluted national values. And during the press conference, this man said in a European, and I quote, in a European country, a child is raped by a migrant and the court releases him. A society that cannot defend its children has no future. This 20-year-old claimed in court openly that the reason why he raped this young boy was because it was a sexual emergency as he had not had sex in four months. You want to know who made that statement? Vladimir Putin. Even some evil realizes there is a limit. There is a line. And I fear that we are getting very close to that line when our enemies, morally, spiritually, politically, sociologically, psychologically seem to be some speaking some words of truth. We are now to accept them as normal and we ourselves as bigots, racist, and even terrorists. We men think they're women and women think they are men. Just when I'm losing faith in society, I see a little old lady standing up in the bus to give her seat to a pregnant man. When Satan tempted Adam and Eve, it was not with things of this world. It was to simply question God. You know the drill. God's words are out of date. They're racist. They're biased. They're not inclusive. Then there are those who say as famous scientists when asked about life on other planets, well, they say it stands to reason and logic with the numberless planets and solar systems out there that there just has to be 
through statistics life. No, it doesn't. No, there doesn't. There's some worldly wisdom for you. At this time, at this time, at this time, there is not a sin in the Bible that the modern day apostate church has not accepted as the norm or at least speaking out against it. Name me one sin. I'm not talking about the world. I'm talking about the church. Well, we see many major denominations walking that path of apostasy. United Methodists, Lutherans, Presbyterians, Southern Baptists didn't want to be left out, so they jumped on the wagon. A Lutheran evangelical church called Helgen Edna Community Lutheran Church, a, a good sized church, very modern, good congregation. And their pastor, a lady by the name of Reverend Rachel Small Stokes. And I don't know if she made it up or if she got it from somewhere, but you know how. As Methodists, we always used to do the Apostles' Creed at the beginning of the service and other denominations as well. But there is a new creed out now for this church and for mainline denominational church. It's called the Sparkle Creed. Not the Nicene Creed, not the Apostles' Creed. The Sparkle Creed. Listen to it. And they say this together as a congregation. It's up on their screen. I believe in the non-binary God whose pronouns are plural. I believe in Jesus Christ, their child, who wore a fabulous tunic and had two dads and who saw everyone as a sibling child of God. I believe in the rainbow spirit who shatters our image of one white light and refracts it into a rainbow of glorious diversity. I believe in the church of everyday saints as numerous, creative, and resilient as patches on the AIDS quilt whose feet are grounded in mud and whose eyes gaze at the stars in wonder. I believe in the calling to each of us that love is love is love. So beloved, let us love, whatever that means. And this congregation says this every week. I know it's difficult to follow the Lord But if you're watching me, I may not agree with everything that you say or you believe. But I know with my outspokenness that if you're still listening to me, you're trying to be a good Christian. Otherwise, you've already shut me off. So this sermon is to confirm. Neither rough waters, dark skies, waterless deserts, or mountains of rocks. We will follow Christ. And we'll face the world. And yes, we will come with diversity. Different colors. Different cultures. Different countries. Different colored skin. But we unite under the banner that Jesus Christ is the Lord. The dark clouds will protect us. The rocks will turn into stepping stones. No matter how rough it gets, and it will, God is with us always. He's right here beside each of us at this moment. 
and even with you at home, even when he is silent. We now would I invite you to join us if you have secured a piece of uh, bread or cracker and some juice to share in the Holy Eucharist, the Lord's Supper, Holy Communion, as we share with the Lord. And the Lord reminds us of his sovereignty and who he is and whose we are. We ask those that are here and those that are home, if you will please wait and then we can all receive the sacrament together. Take this now a symbol of God's and Christ's body. Let us break and eat. Let us do this in remembrance of him. Thank you for being with us, and uh, please excuse my voice this week. Uh, Fawn and I are uh, right after church getting ready to go on our staycation. You know what a staycation is, don't you? That's what we're doing, and uh, we're leaving our camper, our travel trailer in the front yard, and we're going to load it down with uh, ham and potato salad and baked beans and all kinds of candy and uh, turn on the air conditioner and uh, watch uh, non-stop uh, a lot of old movies that we like. So uh, I will not be talking and hopefully my uh, voice will be back to normal next week. God bless you and happy July 4th. And now as Almighty God sits at the throne of heaven through the grace of his Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, be with us now and forevermore. Amen.